off from, and it looks horrible there. Kim, what's the latest? It is pretty horrible, Allison, but the starting line for the Boston Marathon is right behind me. 23,000 people have registered to run in the race, but even elite runners say it is going to be difficult. Like most of the East Coast, the heavy rains and the gusty winds will be a headache for everyone. It's being called the worst storm to hit the East Coast in 10 years. Heavy rain saturated the ground, turning streets into rivers in Westchester, New York. My car got stuck in the water. I just pushed it out right now. I'm trying to find my way back to the Bronx. Trying to get anywhere was tricky. In New York alone, three airports canceled more than 400 flights. Albany, New York looked more like Christmas, not the beginning of spring. The South also took a beating. A tornado near Tampa, Florida tore apart trailer homes. Took about 30 seconds, and when I walked outside, the roof was right off. In West Virginia, rescue crews saved people from rising waters. As this nasty weather continued up the East Coast, runners prepared for an even more challenging 26 miles in the Boston Marathon. Just prepare yourself for the worst, and if it doesn't happen, you're ahead of the game. The excitement, the enthusiasm will just override the weather issue. Now, the race is set to start at 10 a.m. In 111 years, the Boston Marathon has never been canceled. Forecasters are calling for much more rain today, but they say the temperatures may not even get above 40 degrees. I'll send it back to you in New York. All right, we thank you very much. Oh, so it's horrible. In New England, it is Patriot Day in Massachusetts. It's uh, Emancipation Day in Washington, D.C. And it's news time with Allison. All right, let me tell you what's happening at this hour. Police are beefing up a mountain search effort for a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer missing in the Philippines. Julia Campbell has been missing for a week since a solo hike about 160 miles north of Manila. So far, there have been no clues to the woman's whereabouts. The Iraq war funding debate continues today with the president making remarks later this morning. Kelly Wright is live in Washington with the latest. Good morning, Kelly. Yeah, Allison, good morning to you as well. President Bush is expected to make remarks on the war supplemental bill today at 11 o'clock. The event is scheduled to take place in the Rose Garden at the White House. President Bush has extended invitations in the past to congressional leaders to meet with him at the White House to discuss the war in Iraq. Today, members of Congress are back in session at the nation's capital, topping the business of the day. The House and Senate must reconcile their versions of the war supplemental bill to fund troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Vice President Dick Cheney says while some Democrats have made threats to stop funding U.S. troops, he is, quote, willing to bet they will back down and approve the spending, sparking a debate between he and some Democrat leaders. Well, I don't think um, there, that a majority of the Democrats in the Congress want to leave America's fighting forces in harm's way without the resources they need to defend themselves. But He's been wrong consistently on Iraq. He has misled the people consistently on Iraq. He has misstated. He has exaggerated. And today also marks the uh, 100th day for Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House. Of course, she is going to be leading the way in terms of what the, uh, the House Democrats decide on doing with the regards to the war funding. And adding a reminder here again, President Bush will be making remarks on the war supplemental bill today, putting the pressure on everyone in Congress. He'll make that speech today at 11 o'clock. The event, again, is scheduled to take place in the Rose Garden at the White House. Of course, this inclement weather could change the location, but when the president to speak, so you can bet you'll see it live right here on the Fox News Channel. Allison? Thanks, Kelly. And we have a former Army medic coming up to give us her take on the uh, war spending coming up. Thank you. Meanwhile, one Northwest Airlines pilot was flying, but not the way you'd expect. Police say 50 year old Walter Danelco led them on a cocaine fueled high speed chase going the wrong way down a major highway in Michigan. Spike strips were needed to stop his Hummer, and police say Danelco attacked them before he was arrested. Danalco faces multiple felony charges, including cocaine possession, eluding police, and assaulting officers. And three murder suspects led police on a high-speed chase in California that had a smashing conclusion. Ouch. Uh, at one point, the car even slowed down so one of the suspects could hop out, but he was soon taken into custody. The luck of the other men ran out when they were blindsided by another car barreling through an intersection. All three suspects will be booked on suspicion of murder. The Material Girl 
turned a, a, adopted mother is expected back in Africa today, this time to help AIDS orphans. Madonna's publicist says she'll return to the nation of Malawi to oversee the building of a children's health care center, not to adopt another child, as had been speculated. Last fall, Madonna sparked controversy when she adopted a toddler from Malawi. David. Rights groups say the government might have cut legal corners to fast track the adoption for the pop star. Okay, those are your headlines. Now let's go over to 